In this video, list comprehensions with multiple for loops. We're going to learn how to use two or more for loops in a list comprehension. We're going to consider data types. We're going to consider um, use cases and edge cases and a little bit of everything. So hopefully this is a good overall introduction to using multiple for loops in your Python list comprehensions. So I've created two lists for us here, nums and fruits. And I'll just give you one double list comprehension right off the bat. And we could do if for i in nums for f in fruits. And when we run that, um, the output is one list of tuples. Um, and you can see how we've put our numbers and our strings together. So one peaches, one apples, four peaches, four oranges, whatever. So that is our double for loop. And you might be asking, what would this look like in a non-list comprehension context? Like what's the sequence of events? And I'll show you that next. So what you would do is for i in nums, for f in fruits, print i f. And of course, we're not returning a list, so we're just kind of iterating over it, but you can see that the sequence of events and the outputs are the exact same. So for all intents and purposes, these two things are equivalent. This list comprehension and this double for loop are equivalent. And what's important is the sequence here. And by sequence, I mean this outer for loop is on the left, and then this inner for loop of fruits is nested and it's on the right in the list comprehension. So just make sure that your highest level for loop is to the left and then all the other ones are to the right of that. So if I was to um, even get a little crazier with it and add a third for loop here, so let's say, I don't know, for J in some new list, call it 10, 20, 30, We can run that. Um, we have a tuple with three values in it now. And just know that this is kind of the equivalent of a triple nested for loop. So it would be the equivalent of we did for i and nums, uh, for f and fruits, um, and for j in 10, 20, 30. So these two things are equivalent. And again, just wanted to point out that your outer for loop needs to be to the left of your list comprehension. And then those inner for loops, uh, which are nested with levels of indentation, will come to the right um, in a list comprehension context. So all that just to be said that pay attention to the order of your for loops and ensure that the outer most important for loop is first and then the follow-on for loops are basically the equivalent of nested for loops. Next, I wanna mention um, flattening lists. And I actually have a whole video about that, but let's just go over it real quick because this is a very common use case of nested for loops and using two for loops in a list comprehension. So let's just say um, we had a list of lists. And so we'll say we have one, two, or 12, three here, and then we have 55 here, and then we have um, some other stuff going on here. So just a whole bunch of random um, lists of lists. So A is our list of lists. So how could we flatten this into one consistent list? Well, with a double for loop, with a double for loop in our list comprehension. So we could do something like this. So item for sublist in A for item in sublist. And when we run that, we flatten that list and all of those values are together in one list. And I'll just break this down real quick. Once again, to emphasize that the more important for loop is to the left and um, we've loot and from our outer list, um, we are accessing these inner lists, which I've called sub list to hopefully make it easier for you. And then in this second for loop, um, we're looping over every item in that sub list. And that's why it says item here. Um, 
because that's ultimately what we want, those items in the sublist. So that's how you can flatten a list using two for loops in Python in a list comprehension. The next thing I want to review is data types. And if we come back to our old example of nums and fruits, um, you'll see that we have a list of tuples. And what I want to mention is that it doesn't have to be tuples. And that's by far the most common example you'll see online. But just know that um, this can be a list of anything. So our if could be if as key value pairs. And now we have a list of dictionaries. Um, you could even do something like a list of lists and have just i f as value in a list and now we have a list of lists um, you could even wrap a set around that and we return a list of sets so all that to say is that sure the most common example you might see um, is tuples online but just know that you can do dictionaries or whatever you want with your double for loops the next thing I want to talk about is lists of different sizes. So in our example, um, we're using nums and fruits, and both of these lists had the same length. And if you did something like zip, which is often compared to list comprehensions, and we did our nums and our fruits, well, first I'll show you this output. But now what if our nums was only one, two, three? When we run this again, um, we don't have oranges because it's zipping with consideration to the shortest of the two lists. So when you're zipping something together, um, it's only going to iterate up to the shortest of the two lists. So if you had a list with 100 values and a list with 10 values, it's only going to zip the first 10 values. And that's what you see here. But if you do the same thing in a list comprehension context, and hopefully I can pull this up, well, you're still going to get the oranges. So you're going to get all four of the values. But suppose it's a little bit obvious. Your keys are only going to be one, two, and three. And so now we have, or the index of one, we have four values. For the index of two, we have four values. The index of three, we have four values. And that's just a little bit different than what would happen with a zip where the oranges have been forgotten about because the lists were different lengths. So just know that uh, when you're doing list comprehensions, it's okay for the lists to be of different lengths. Um, just know how that will affect the output. The last thing I want to mention is unused values. And what I mean by that is if I pull back this list comprehension, Let's say um, I only want to uh, return the i. Well, you can do that, and we're <laughs> returning i for i and nums for f and fruits, but the fruits never get returned. Um, they never get used. And this is very much the equivalent of if you did for i in nums, for f in fruits, print i. And so, these values are equivalent. We have four ones, we have four twos, we have four threes, and that's the same thing that we get here. So even if you're, um, you know, looping over things, if you're not using them, the loop is still happening. Um, you're just not grabbing the values from that. Hopefully, hopefully this was intuitive for people, and I'll just run it one more time just to show you that. Um, the print that's occurring, or this I, is really happening at a nested level that's probably deeper than you were thought that it was occurring. So you may have thought that that um, print was going to happen here and be like print I, um, and then have another level like 4F and fruits, whatever. Um, but that is not the case. So really, when you are doing something like this, just know that um, what you're returning is basically going to the deepest level of iteration. So just something to be aware of. So we're coming to the end of the video. Um, we've talked about inner and outer for loops. We've talked about data types. We've talked about flattening lists. Uh, we've talked about lists of different lengths. 
We've talked about unused variables and the, um, the nesting of the activities that are going on. But I think what's most important and what'll get you kind of the 80-20 of the way there is just to know that the outer for loop really needs to be to the left and that second for loop needs to be to the right. And as long as you get that idea that the outer one is kind of the equivalent of this for i and nums, blah, blah, blah. And then the inner one is for f, blah, blah, blah. As long as you can kind of in your head work out what that list comprehension would look like as a traditional for loop, then you'll have a pretty strong understanding of how to use nested for loops and double for loops and multiple for loops in list comprehensions in Python to the best of your ability. So hopefully you've learned something from this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for watching.